Another analogy which may be relevant to the containers is from the animal world. By the way, I apologize for this gory analogy, especially to our vegetarian friends, but this is a pretty apt one for the complex digital world we live in. Back in the days of physical and even virtual machines, we used to name and care for our servers like we name and care for our pets. We used to monitor them and when they got sick, we used to take them offline and fix them or reconfigure them. This works when you have a relatively small cluster of few machines to worry about. But when you're dealing with thousands or tens of thousands of machines, this specialized care is impossible. Generally, about 2% of the nodes can fail on any given day, which means we will have to care for and heal a lot of servers on a continuous basis. So using containers, we can treat our nodes or servers like cattle. These are anonymous members of the cluster and are identical to each other. If they experience any issues, we simply sacrifice them, replace them with new ones. Containers are a solution to the problem of how to get software to run reliably when moved from one computing environment to another. This could be from a developer's laptop to a test environment, from a staging environment into production, and perhaps from a physical machine in a data center to a virtual machine in a private or public cloud. Containerized data infrastructure is a step forward in the industry, combining maximum energy savings with operational flexibility. With ubiquitous connectivity and our insatiable desire to connect with the world, software and web applications have become ever more sophisticated. With the world getting faster internet access and mobile connectivity, these applications will only grow larger and more complex. In turn, the infrastructure deployments are getting larger and more complex as well. When we deploy new applications, we need to slice or portion our infrastructure to host the new application. For instance, we need to say for our backend database, we will use a large instance of a virtual machine and for our web servers, we will use two load balanced web servers. Could you imagine if we had to make these type of decisions while running any application on personal computers? Suppose if your operating system asked you which CPU should the computer use to run a browser window every time you ran a browser. Then it asked you where to run the email client. Won't it be terribly annoying? But the modern operating systems are smart enough to figure out how to run and manage individual instances of applications simultaneously. The operating systems have components like schedulers, memory garbage collectors, virtual memory, to continuously manage our running applications. What if we had similar operating system to manage and run our data centers as well? Whether we are managing two virtual nodes or 10,000 of them, wouldn't it be nice just to instruct our collection of servers or our data center, hey data center, I want to run a web application and a database. Here is the code and here are the commands to run these applications. Please figure out which nodes can run these applications deploy them and run them. By the way, if any one of those nodes die, please make sure you move my application to another healthy node so that the end users do not experience any disruption. Containers carry a lot of core benefits to deployment of applications. Containers can help us isolate all our dependencies and deploy them into our target environment in a reliable and consistent manner. Containers are hardware agnostic. The container engines can make sure that we can run our containers on any distribution of Linux or other operating systems as long as they comply with the container APIs. Container operations and deployments can be fully scripted and thus automated. This works really well for DevOps processes. Containers are really lightweight, where virtual machine images could range from 10 to hundreds of gigabytes, containers are only 10 to a few hundred megabytes. So they occupy less space and are very efficient to handle. Because of their small size, copying and moving them from environment to environment is very efficient. Because of the underlying container technology, containers are very portable. 
Container images can be deployed on multiple operating systems and hardware configurations. We can deploy many of these isolated units of applications on a single physical or virtual machine. This high density helps us achieve very high efficiency and resource utilization. But how exactly do these containers are of help to software developers and engineers? They build and run their code on their local containers and then ship them to be deployed in any target environment without worrying about any compatibility issues. Containers also take away any chances of other applications polluting the target environment by installing any incompatible version of the library or misconfiguring some global environment variables. Engineers can consistently deploy the exact version of packages which are needed by their code to run. Since containers are highly scriptable, developers can automate all the build, packaging and deployment tasks, thus making the overall process more reliable, robust and efficient. Let's look at what containers bring for DevOps engineers. They can configure their runtime environments with container hosts and run anything which has been packaged inside container images. Since everything is standardized, the DevOps engineers can deploy the software consistently and in a repeatable fashion. This automated and repeatable process naturally leads to more efficiency and small number of DevOps engineers can manage larger and larger infrastructure footprints. Again, because of excellent scripting support, container deployments can be automated. Okay, so far you have had a good overview of containers. Our discussion on containers is incomplete without talking about Docker the hot container technology which is taking the DevOps world by the storm. Docker is an open source engine that can help you automate the deployment of applications inside software containers. It was released in March 2013 and has been gaining popularity ever since. It has over 100 million downloads and over 75,000 applications are running as Dockerized applications. That's a lot. Large companies like eBay, Rackspace, Spotify, Yelp, etc. are using Docker technology in their production data centers. But Docker is free and easy to use and easy to get started. So even startups are using Docker technology for building innovative products. Most of the startups I work with use Docker to deploy their applications. Docker has become synonymous with container technology because it has been the most successful at popularizing it. Let's refer again to the compatibility metrics we had been talking about. You can now easily and reliably deploy diverse applications built using different frameworks, languages, package versions into many different target environments by simply packaging them up into container images and deploying these container images in the target environments. Docker separates applications from the underlying infrastructure using container technology, just like virtual machines separate the operating systems from the underlying bare metal hardware. These diagrams provide visual clues about the differences between deploying our applications on virtual machines versus deploying them as Dockerized applications. In each scenario, we start with a bare metal hardware server, which has a host operating system. In case of virtual machines, we run a hypervisor, which is responsible for launching many virtual machines with the guest operating system. This guest operating system is quite heavy, ranging from 10 to few hundred gigabytes. This reduces portability and introduces very tight coupling. On top of this guest operating system, we deploy our application along with our application code, the dependencies, libraries, and packages. In this case, our application relies very heavily on the guest operating system to provide a clean and sanitary environment. But in a containerized application, we do not have a burden of any guest operating system. The operating system is virtualized with the help of the Docker engine. We deploy only our application code, runtime libraries, dependencies, etc. in an isolated environment in container images. Since these containers contain only the required bits, 
They are only a few megabytes in size and thus very efficient and portable. These containers are then run by the Docker engine. We do not need to worry about the interaction or effects of the operating system. It is outside of the scope of our container. 